Okay, so for this, it doesn't really matter what color pencils you use, just make sure you have one color and three different shades of that color. Start with the lightest color and draw your forms very, very lightly. Using the same shade, go ahead and color your forms very lightly in circular motions. They can be in long ovals, little circles. This is going to help keep control of your coloring so you don't go outside the lines. It also helps to use the side of your color pencil to color in because if you're just using the tip of the color pencil, you're going to get a lot of what I call chicken scratches. By the way, make sure that you're not like me and forget to add a light source. A light source is very, very important, otherwise you're not going to know where to put your shadows and where to keep your highlights on. Once you finish coloring with the light shade, grab the medium shade, which in this case I have blue, and very lightly go ahead and start coloring in where the shadows are going to be. Also very important when shading with color pencils, layers are important. Layers! Start off lightly and then little by little keep adding more layers. Don't just automatically put a lot of pressure and darken it up because otherwise your colors are not going to blend correctly. Now for the square it's a little bit more tricky but make sure that you pay attention to where your light source is and everything opposite of it is where the shadow is going to be. Now right here I'm making an outline of where I want the shadows to be or where I believe the shadows are going to be. Obviously this is much easier if you have a reference to look at because then you can see where exactly the shadows are placed. And to make them a little bit more natural looking I decided to not just make a straight line or a straight curve. I decided to make a more organic line so that it blends in a little bit more naturally. Remember to always start light and gradually increase to dark. If you're not sure how dark or how light you need to be coloring, you can make what I like to call a little valley tornado, where you just test out going from dark all the way to light. Right here is a good spot. You don't want to make it too dark, but you also don't want to make it too light. Okay, so now I'm taking the darkest color of the set, which is violet in this case. And even though this color is going to be used to darken up the shadows, I still don't want to go too dark. I still want to color lightly, and because of the layers, it's just going to automatically darken up. This part right here is a little bit easier because you already have the shadows set down, so all you have to do is just literally go over them with this color. Now obviously the color I'm using is not blue, so to avoid it standing out way too much and have it blend better, I'm going to go ahead and color the entire figure with a very, very light shade of that color. I will say it does help when you start off at the shadows and then move slowly towards the areas where the light hits. Now this right here is pretty good, but we're not done yet. So you're going to go back and grab the lightest color, the one that you used to start it all, and color the entire figure again. For this layer, however, you're going to put a little bit more pressure on it, so it is going to be a little bit darker. But don't go too crazy with the pressure. Otherwise, you're just going to have one big sky blue blob. Also, when going over the highlight areas of the object, put about maybe 20 to 30% less pressure so you don't completely cover it up. We still want to give that illusion of the light reflecting on the object. And to kind of get an idea of how much pressure I'm putting on this, it's about this much. Also using rulers or objects to help you smoothen out some edges is totally acceptable. 
Also, helpful tip, whenever shading right beside another shadow, in order for both shadows to not look the same and not to clash, you have to leave a little reflective light, which is this little white line right here. It's barely, barely visible, but you can tell that it's just a little line that's lighter than the rest of the area. That reflective light is what helps separate one shadow from the other to avoid any one colored blobs. Now the last step, and this is optional, but it will make your picture much nicer, is grab a white color pencil and then put a little bit more pressure and color the entire object. What that's gonna do is it's gonna help blend all the colors together so that you end up with a smooth texture rather than a very, very grainy texture that the color pencil usually leaves. Also what will help tremendously is if you put some kind of padding underneath your drawing such as newspaper, magazine paper, or just a bunch of extra paper. So I've had a lot of questions about how to use Prismacolors and also what's the difference between Prismacolors and regular color pencils. So here I'm doing the same exact thing, except I'm using, obviously, Prismacolors. Uh, the only difference is just those have a much softer lead, meaning they just blend much easier. And uh, you really won't notice the difference when you try them just once. You have to keep practicing with them for a good amount of time to actually notice the difference between how well and how easy they blend compared to just regular color pencils. Also, if you've ever used these, you might have noticed that they either break easily or they squish down way too easy. Uh, that's again that's because the lead is like super super soft just to allow much better blending. Prismas also have more pigment meaning they have much richer color than a regular let's say color pencil would. Now because of that you really 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 have to control the pressure that you put on your color pencil because if you put way too much it's gonna be very very dark and it's gonna be really hard to bring that back. And you can see already here the difference between the regular color pencil sphere and the one with prisma colors. Now right here what I have is a colorless color pencil so it has absolutely no color. It's called a blender and what it does is pretty much the same thing we did with the white color pencil earlier. This does the same thing except obviously it doesn't put any color at all. It completely blends everything together much nicer than the white color pencil would. But that's it. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much, but let me know if you have any questions. Goodbye! Layers!